Hi again, welcome to another video. And in this video, we're gonna have a look at this engine that's in front of the camera. It's off an old Suffolk Punch lawnmower, cylinder lawnmower, I think. Um, and yeah, I've had it in my unit for a long time on the shelf. It doesn't look in bad condition. It pulls over. I've never tried to start it. Um, I don't know whether it's got spark. We'll have a look at that when we get on the bench. Uh, the carburetor, I will clean out um, regardless um, before I even try to start it because it's a bit grimy looking and we can uh, go through and I'll show you how to clean one of these carburetors out. Is there an old carburetor on these? Um, I think the fuel tank's clean. I think I looked in there a little while ago and that's clean. I've actually got another one of these as well. I think this is the best condition one out of the two, but basically I want to start it up and then I'll decide what to do with it. Uh, and the engine complete probably isn't worth a fortune. It's probably better if I part it out, if I decide to get rid of it. I haven't really got a use for it myself. So at least I've got it running. I'd know that the, well, obviously the recoil would work. The carburetor would be okay. And um, yeah, a few other bits. So we'll see. And I could actually sell just a engine um, block on its own because I'd know that runs okay. Uh, but we'll see. I might land up keeping it if I can find somewhere to tuck it on the shelf as a bit of shed art or man cave type um, art. Yeah, I might keep it because I, I, like, I like these old engines. They do run really nice. They're um, all cast iron. And yeah, they were a good engine back in the day. So yeah, we'll get on the bench and have a little bit of a look at it um, around the engine. There is a plate on the side, so we'll have a look at that and see what that's got written on it. And then we'll get on with sorting the little bits and pieces out on it. And I don't think it'll take much to get it running. So yeah, I'll see you when we're back on the bench. So this is the sticker on the side. That's all the information. Actually, the place isn't too far from me um, where this was made back in the day. I'm not sure of age. There is another number on the engine block, so we can probably see the age from that. But yeah, um, you don't see that much anymore. Made in England. Yeah, we have some numbers on the engine there. E8207. Uh, I would imagine that's probably type of engine. And we have some other engine numbers there. I think that's a two on the end, or a three. It could be a three. It hasn't been stamped brilliantly. 188063. So... I don't know whether this would be dating back to 1963, would it? I'm not sure. Not that great with uh, yeah, dating engines. Um, so um, if someone can tell me what the year of this is, uh, well, it ain't 18. It ain't 1880. <laughs> that's for sure. So um, uh, I know I've, this is part of a series of um, garden machines from yesteryear, but I haven't got any of the dates back to 1880, um, the Industrial Revolution. Um, I think that was around that time. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think back of my school days, the history. Um, but it does say, I think that's 63, or it possibly might have been stamped wrong, and it might be 68. But yeah, it probably would be around. I'd have put it, uh, I'd have put it as early 70s, but it could be a little bit older. So um, let's have a look at the carburetor side of things. We have a little Zenith carburetor on here, and the air filter has actually been held up with a bit of wire which I will take off so I can drop that and then I'll get that carb off and probably just put it through the old sonic cleaner um, and we have the when I took it off the mower I think I took it off the mower and scrapped the mower um, I can't remember now but the levers there the throttle lever is there so that's handy we have the just there we have the HT lead uh, the plugs in it uh, to start it up I probably will take the clutch off um, it'd just be better to have that out of the way otherwise it's going to be kicking out going as i start it uh as for oil let's have a little look oil i might shake a little bit let's see if we've got oil in it yep a bit black but it's up to the level so that's a good sign i'll leave that in there to start it up i'm not going to change the oil for that if i can get that dipstick back in there we go it's back in so really i suppose the next uh easiest bit really is to just see if it's got spark if it's got spark then we haven't got um too much of a problem i'm just off camera just checking the fuel tank oh that's really clean i'll show you that actually just get the torch yeah that's really good for the age of it the engine does look quite well looked after doesn't look like it's had a hard life, so um, yeah. So I think you'll probably start up with with little fuss, to be honest. Uh, but I will go through the things, and I will probably replace the, the pull rope. 
probably do that as well. Then again, it's not too bad actually, so perhaps I won't. We'll see. We'll see whether uh, how, how far I take this video and how much I decide to do. But yeah, I'm just gonna take the plug out and then we'll see if we've got spark. So now I've got the plug out, as you can see, I've put the HT lead on right there. So I'm just gonna pull it over. You might shake a little bit, but we'll see if we've got spark. I don't think there's a on and off on this a stop. I think that is what you just press down on top of the plug to, uh, to, to kill the engine. So um, let's just have a look. can't see any spark. I'm just going to check that where I'm earthing it out is good enough. I'm not touching it because if it does spark I'll get a shock. Uh, but I don't think there is a stop on it because that would be the stop. It means that the side is going to have to come off and I'll have to clean the points out which is okay. It's um, more to the video isn't it? Sorry you are going to shake a little bit. I do apologise. To me, that doesn't look like there is any spark. So it's gonna be the cowling off, the re recoil off, cowling off, and then we'll get in there and have a look and get the flywheel off, or hopefully I haven't got to do that. Hopefully there is a window to get something in to clean the points. Probably just dirty points. But I'll be back with you when I've got that set up to take the side off. So first we'll get this recoil off and you're lucky today because you're getting the full works. We're gonna be doing it all on this. Um, we're gonna be, like I said, doing the carburetor. I've got to clean the points. And yeah, um, so we'll have a good look around this engine. If it had a spark, obviously, I wouldn't have been doing this. So yeah, you've got a bit of a bonus. Get that off. Not sure the size actually, because it would be imperial. Well, I've got 12 mil on it. 11 was too tight, 12 was too loose. So I'm not quite sure what it would have been, but it's done it, the 12 has done it just. Just get a bit more light on the subject. There you go. I love hearing these little engines run. They just sound like well, they run so so little sort of effort. They sort of you know just chug along. All they need to do. Good old engine back in the day. So that's that off. Uh, we've got to get a screwdriver in there and get them off. If I can, yep. It does look in really good condition in there. These things are left um, sitting around for a long time, so the points do get a bit corroded. But I imagine most of the other bits are all right. But that's got to come off to get that off. I'm not sure what size that is. But there is one bolt there. Yeah, it feels like it should be 11. But it wouldn't go on the front ones. Oh, it goes on that one. So, that one done. Could have had the impact actually, but the battery's in the house because it's gone flat. This would be, it'd be a shame to sort of paint this engine up. I think the way it looks and the sort of bit of patina and that on it, I think it looks all right. Uh, I won't be painting this up or anything. Just get it running, put uh, some WD over it just to give it a little bit of a shine. And then, yeah, that's if I decide to keep it. But I think I probably will find a shelf for this. Once it's started up, um, yeah. Won't be going much in again because I doubt I'll be putting it on anything. Uh, there's a couple more engine bolts around. Just position here, there. One there. Actually, that's actually, I think, to take the tank off, but it don't matter. We might as well separate that. Yeah, I just took out that one. There's one more for the tank. Uh, there is a fuel tap on there and a fuel line, but these things tend to, well, the, the pipes tend to go quite hard and the taps tend to leak over time. So it might, it'll probably have to have a new fuel hose on it. And hopefully the taps are right. If not, I'll purchase a tap for it. They're not, not that expensive, only the plastic one. It's not like it's a brass tap or anything. <laughs> Tank's 
hangs off. There is a bit of fuel in there. And to be fair, it's a bit gunky. But it don't smell too bad, so it's not like it's gone off. Would have been old fuel in this anyway, it wouldn't be like the new stuff that uh, goes off quick. So there's two more at the top. There's one there and one there. I'll just get them undone. And there's more, there's one down the bottom as well. Oh. And I think there'll probably be one down the, the other side down the bottom. Now you only get about three to hold it all on. There's one round the other side, I'll do that and then I'll be back with you because it's taken quite a while to do these. So, yeah, there's one more down there. I'll get out and done and be back with you. So now that should pull off, I think. I say I think. I think I've undone them all. If there's any more holding it. Now that is, that's all there was. So we take that off, get that cowling out of the way. And then we're to the... Ah, we have got a little cap there. I think it just... Oh, yeah, it just flicks off. So we can get in there and clean the points. That's um, good. I was hoping there was going to be something like that. There usually, there usually is, but sometimes you do have to take the flywheel off. I have had to in the past on certain other engines. What I'll do probably is just block that up and then you'll be able to see in there. So I'll get that set up and then we'll have a look and clean these points. So there's the points there. I'm not sure how well you can see that, but as I just go there, you can just see them shut, see? So they are open and shown. It's quite a big gap. I'm not sure the gap this is supposed to be. But initially, I think I'm going to just give them a clean. I haven't undone them yet to have a, have a look to see how dirty they are. Find a screwdriver. Have just a little look. Mm, it's hard to tell. But they are working. So unless it's something like a coil is gone or something. I don't know. But... Um, We'll get these cleaned. Uh, usually to clean them, I just wrap a bit of well, sandpaper around some feeler gauges or a flat screwdriver or something like that. Um, and then we'll get in there and get that cleaned. So what I'm trying to do is get, just open the points and then get this bit of sandpaper in there, which isn't that easy. Sometimes I don't actually look that, um, that day and it just takes just a few rubs through with a bit of um, sandpaper and they come up clean and then it will spark. So I finally got that in there, it's been a bit awkward. And then I'm just working it backwards and forwards between them two uh, parts in between where the gap is. And sometimes what I do, it's a bit easier, get some pin nose or needle nose pliers and just get close and do that. Sort of a nail, a thin uh, emery board or something would be better because it'd be a bit more uh, sort of stiffer between more rigid well i've got something off of that where are we so yeah we'll give that a little go and see if it's got spark so i did have to repeat that process a few times cleaning the points but now last time i looked we did have spark i can see it i'm not sure you can i'd like you to see that i don't want to hit the tripod Only a very, very faint spark. I'm not sure how well you can see that, but it has got spark. Um, so you might have to take my word for it. I'm not sure whether the camera caught it or not. 
um, but it does have spark, so we can move on. I was turning over by hand, so not very quick, but there is a spark. So off camera, I'm going to put all that um, cowling and that back on, and then we'll be ready to deal with the carburetor. But I am tempted just to give it a little, a little sniff in there of some um, carb spray or something, just to see if it does pop, um, because... I'm a bit impatient with this one. I want to hear it sort of far up, uh, and then we'll get onto the carburetor. We'll probably do. We'll probably do that. Um, so yeah, it has spark, so it was just a dirty point, and we can um, yeah get on and see if we can get this engine running fairly quickly. I think probably the carb would be okay, but I'm still gonna strip. I still am gonna strip it down just to show you the internals of these carbs because they are a bit different to what we see on lawnmowers nowadays. Um, they're more like this sort of thing, and yeah, there runs on this are just a bit different so yeah i'll get all that side back on and cowling and all that and then we'll yeah probably give a little quick fire up. i've got all the cowling and everything back on now and i can pull it over properly now to show you the spark so we'll do that i'll just turn my lights off <laughs> So I'm going to end the video here. So this is part one of this. In the next video, we'll do the carb, clean the carb out, and we'll style it up. Uh, but just before I go, See you in the next one.